we were informed of the birth of the two children, Yaakov and Esav, to Yitzchak and Rivka. At the conclusion of Parashat Toldot, Yaakov receives the blessing and is advised, for his own safety, to leave home. In Parashat Vayetze, Yaakov leaves home, travels into what was considered then Chutz Aretz, works for Lavan for 22 years, marries Rachel Leah Bilha Zilpa, has 11 children, and 34 years after his departure from home, he returns back to Eretz Canaan along with three of the wives and his children, Rachel dying mid-journey and buried Derech Ephrat. The beginning of Parashat Vayishlach details the meeting between Yaakov and Esav, and by the end of Parashat Vayishlach, Perek Lamad Vav, we have the Pasuk under discussion, part of the narrative that informs us that Esav collects his entire entourage and emigrates to Eretz Edom, specifically around Har Seir. Which brings us to the key question to understanding the Rashi, one that relates to the statement that Vayelech el Eretz mipne Yaakov Achiv. But first, uh, two assumptions. Firstly, that despite Esav's anger with Yaakov for usurping the right of the firstborn Brachot, 34 years later, this anger had subsided, and from the Pshuda Shel Mikra of the text, upon Yaakov's return from Haran, there was a reconciliation between the two brothers. A second point, there is nothing within the text that suggests that Esav was forced to emigrate to Eretz Edom. There is no evidence recorded in the text of a battle, a dispute, that would have forced the two camps to separate, as was the case with Avraham and Lot, in which the two camps needed to be separated on account of the threat of violence from the shepherds of Lot. Here, there is no indication from the text of any ill feeling, neither from Yaakov to Esav or Esav to Yaakov, and therefore, it is fair to assume that the Vayelech el Eretz Mipne Yaakov Achiv was a conscious decision that Esav had made, one in which he was not forced to undertake against his will. Keeping in mind that for the past 34 years, Esav had been living in Eretz Canaan, and all of a sudden Yaakov arrives on the scene, thereby creating the situation in which there would be a shortage of grazing lands. Therefore, logic would dictate that Esav had a prior right to remain, and if anybody needed to move, it should have been Yaakov. Hence the question, why was it that it was actually Esav, not Yaakov, who departed Eretz Canaan? This, it appears, is the question that Rashi addresses in his commentary to Pasuk Zayin, V'lo yachla Eretz Megurehem.